and Doug were on their way to a roadworks site. Mr McAdams got a special job for us, said Doug, and it's top secret. How do you know it's top secret, asked Dick. Because we can't start the job until everyone else has gone home, he said. Oh, that sounds exciting, said Dick. It certainly was a busy sight. I don't think this is a very good place to stop, shouted Dig. Right, shouted Doug. I'll try over there. Sorry, shouted Dig and Doug. When they'd safely parked the truck, Mr. McAdam, the site manager, came to greet them. Hello, you two. All ready for your special job. With all these trucks, what I need is a couple of night watchmen. Uh, when you say night watchmen, do you mean sort of to keep watch? Sort of at night? Asked Dig. Aye, that's it. You've got it. When, uh, when no one's around, you mean? And it's, uh, dark, said Dig. Not just dark, Dig. Extremely dark, said Doug. Aye, that's it, said Mr. McAdam. I knew you'd know exactly what I meant. Dig and Doug didn't like the sound of that at all. And anyway, where would they sleep? Where would we sleep? They asked, hoping it was something Mr. McAdam hadn't thought of. But before he could answer, Daisy and Farmer Stubble appeared. I've got it! Where do you want it, Mr. McAdam? Ah, good. Down here. And before Dig and Doug knew what was happening... There you are. Your own little caravan. Hello, Dig. Hi, Uncle Doug. You'll be nice and cosy in there. Oh, you certainly will, said Mr. Stubble. Especially on a cold, dark night when there's no one about. Dig and Doug were about to say that it was the nicest caravan they'd ever seen, but sadly they couldn't stay because, stupidly, they hadn't got their pyjamas and toothbrushes. When Mrs. Stubble appeared... I've got them! She said. Dig and Doug. Pyjamas, toothbrushes and clean underwear. Oh, they'll come in handy, said Daisy. Oh, they will, chuckled Mr. McAdam, especially if it's dark and cold and there's no one about. There was no way out of it. Dig and Doug were there for the night. So, when Mr. McAdam had unhooked the caravan, and Daisy and Mrs. Stubble had said they'd come back later with some supper. Dig and Doug were left on their own. Right, said Doug. Let's see what it's like inside. It's nice up this end, said Dig. It's nice up this end, said Doug. It's nicer up this end than it is up that. No, it's nicer up this end, I reckon. Soon they realised that something was wrong. Something's wrong, I reckon. Walk up the other end, Dig, he shouted. Right, said Dig. Sorry! I've got an idea, said Dig. If we put a suitcase under each end, it won't keep tipping up. Right, said Doug. Now you, Doug, shouted Dig. Good. We can go inside now and unpack. Right, said Dig. Just a minute said Doug. How can we unpack our cases if they're under the caravan? Uh-oh. Then Doug had an idea.
last, they were ready to unpack. Dig and Doug were very tired. <sighs> night, night, Doug. Uh, night, night, Dig. Sleep tight, Doug. Uh, sleep tight, Dig. Don't let the bugs bite. And they were soon fast asleep. <laughs> it's only an owl, Dig, said Doug. Course it is, Doug, said Dig. Someone had better take a look, said Doug. Right, said Dig. And seen as how we're night watchmen, it better be one of us. Right, said Doug. You do that while I stay here. Why don't I stay here while you take a look? You're bigger than me. You scare them, said Doug. You're smaller than me. They won't see you, said Dig. In the end, they decided to stick together. The trucks stood like giant creatures. Uh, don't much look like trucks, do they? More like uh, monsters, said Dig. Looking down at us. And they both decided it was time to get back to the caravan. I'm sure it was just an owl we heard, said Dig. Course it was, said Doug. And they turned out the light again and went to sleep. <laughs> Yoo -hoo. What was that? said Dig. Yoo and this time, they were sure that something was out there. Hello, said Doug. Is anyone out here? Said Dig. There was no reply. You could go that way, and I'll go, go this, said Doug. Right, said Dig. And if I see anything, I'll... Out. Off they went. But no sooner were they out of sight. <gasps> Did you hear something? Asked Doug. Yes, replied Dig. Did you? Yes, replied Doug. Ah, don't do that, Doug! It wasn't me, it was you! No, it wasn't! Yes, it was! Dig and Doug were in such a state they didn't know what to do. But eventually, they calmed down, agreed that it was only an owl, and they went back inside. Dig and Duck. Whatever could have been waiting for them inside. Yoo-hoo! Cried Mrs. Stubble. Uncle Doug! Shouted Daisy. It's only us. We brought some supper for you.
It was a bright, sunny morning. No one was around, and it was nice and quiet. It's my breakfast going down, said Dig. It's thunder, shouted Doug. It's an earthquake, shouted Dig. They were both wrong. It was Mr. McAdam on the road roller. Hello, you two, he said. Morning, Mr. McAdam. Hello, Mr. McAdam, they both replied. First, we thought you were Dig's breakfast. And then we thought you were an earthquake. Mr. McAdam hadn't the faintest idea what they were talking about. So he explained what he wanted done today. Between here and the tunnel needs flattening, he said. So, do you think you can handle this old beauty? Oh, yes, said Doug. A piece of cake, that is. What's a piece of cake? asked Mr. McAdam. That is, said Doug. That's not a piece of cake. It's a road roller, said Mr. McAdam. Dig laughed and explained that it was the job that was a piece of cake, not the machine. But Mr. McAdam was so confused, he just waved and left them to it. Right, said Doug. I'll get us started up while you shift the caravan. Why do we need to shift the caravan? asked Dig. Because it's in the way of the road roller, and if we leave it here, it'll be flattened. So while Dig went to get the truck to move the caravan, Doug started flattening the ground. Morning, Dig, said Daisy. Hello, Beth. Hello, Daisy. What have you got there? It's for pumping up tyres. Hello, Daisy. Hello, Beth. And they all went their separate ways. As Eric was checking some pipes, Dig arrived to park the caravan. Yes, this'll do nicely, he said. Oi, said Eric. What's going on? Dig couldn't work out where the voice was coming from. He looked in the back of the truck. Hello, he said. Hello, said the voice. But Dig just couldn't work it out. Hello, he said. Hello, said the voice again, getting rather angry. Hello, Eric, said Dig. What are you up to down there? You sit tight and I'll have you out in no time. Dig waved goodbye and went in search of a better place for the caravan. This'll do, I reckon. Hey, laddie, said Mr. McAdam. What on earth do you think you're doing? Parking the caravan. No, 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 you'll have to find somewhere else. You're in the way of my bricks. Righto, said Dig, and drove off again. Doug, meanwhile, was having an excellent time. I can't find a spot for the caravan, shouted Dig. Park it in the tunnel, said Doug. I shan't be rolling in there for a while, so it'll be nice and safe. Right-o, said Dig, and drove the caravan straight in. As Doug tried to carry on work, he kept hearing a voice. It was so faint, he had to turn off the engine. Is it? said Doug nervously. Me, said the voice. Dig, I'm in the tunnel and I can't get out because the caravan's in the way. 
Dub told him to back the caravan out and turn it round. Left a bit. Right a bit. Right. No, no, left. Left. That's right. Right. Lovely. Soon, the caravan was safely inside. And once they'd unhooked it, they drove the truck away to be parked. Then Mr. McCadden came to see how they were getting on. Strange, he said to himself. No one's here, and the roller's not being used. Hello, he called into the tunnel. He decided that the best thing was to finish the job himself. Dig and Doug arrived back just as Mr. McAdam was driving out again. I've finished off that last bit. I'll see you later. Uh oh. Poor old Dig and Doug. And their poor old caravan. Look on the bright side, Doug, said Dig. At least we weren't in it. Hello, Uncle Doug shouted Daisy. You're looking down in the dumps. What's wrong? And then she saw what was left of their caravan. Oh no, it's all flat. But look on the bright side. At least you weren't in it. Then Beth arrived. Hi Daisy. Hello Beth. Look what's happened to their caravan. Oh no, said Beth. Look on the bright side though. At least you weren't in it. Then Daisy had an idea. I really like that caravan, said Dick. Me too, said Doug. It was like another home. It was another home, said Dick. Oh, well, not a lot we can do about it now. And neither of them could believe their eyes. I can hardly believe my eyes, Doug, said Dig. I can hardly believe your eyes either. It was a very cold morning and felt as though it could snow. It was like it could snow, Doug. The sun's out, Dig. Can't snow if the sun's shining. Come on, we'll do some exercises to warm up. Right, said Dig. Up, two, three, four. Up, two, three, four. Up, two, three, four. Up, two, three, four. Come on, Dig. Up.
When they'd finished and were about to go in, they noticed something strange by the tunnel entrance. Moles, said Doug. That's what that is. Moles, said Dick. Moles? Moles are little creatures that feed on worms. Perhaps it's a giant mole that feeds on workmen, said Doug, <laughs> and laughed. <laughs> Run, they said, and made for the caravan as fast as their legs would carry them. Giant moles like caravans? asked Dig. Dunno, said Doug. It might think it's a new kind of burger. It might, said Dig. And we're the filling. What are we going to do? Hello, you two. It's only me. I've been up all night digging the tunnel. When they realized that it was only Mr. McAdam and that he wasn't a giant mole, they unlocked the door. Sorry about that, said Doug. <laughs> Dig here thought you were a giant mole that had come to eat him. <laughs> Mr. McAdam didn't really know what Doug was talking about, though he told them what to do today. I want you to get rid of that pile of earth, he said. Right, said Doug. We'll start on it now. Good, said Mr. McAdam, and left them to it. Right, said Doug. Let's get started. Right, said Dig. Now then, what if we... Supposing we... How about if we... I'll tell you what... what... The problem was where to put it. Hi, Dig. Hi, Uncle Doug, said Daisy. Hello, Daisy. Hello, Daisy, they both said. Cold today, isn't it? It is, Daisy, said Doug. Especially if you're in your pyjamas. And as Daisy went on her way, Dig and Doug went into change. Got it. We dig a hole and bury it. Oh, very clever, said Doug. And how, may I ask, are we going to dig a hole that size? Dig laughed and pointed at the digger that Doug was leaning on. Well done, Dig. Just checking to see if you were awake. It was perfect for the job. Doug pointed out the nice big bucket for digging the earth out with and the very strong shovel for moving the earth back in again. All we have to do now, said Doug, giving one end of the tape measure to dig, is see how big the mound of earth is. What do we want to do that for? asked Dig. So we know how big the hole has to be, said Doug. Come on, let's get started. But as Doug set off with one end of the measure, Dig just followed him. <clears throat> dig, said Doug. What? said Dig. What are you doing? Measuring. You have to stay in one place, silly, while I do the walking about. <laughs> silly old me, said Dig. Silly old you, said Doug. You carry on while I get the digger going. Right, said Dig. So they did. Now, let's see. Three by... No, no, that's not right. Start again. Two by... Silly me. Try again. One by... Doug couldn't wait to get started on the digger. Ready, Dig? He shouted. I can't wait to get started. Um, I'm... Uh, I'm a bit tied up at the moment. Doug decided he couldn't wait any longer. So he began digging.
before long, the hole was ready for the mound of earth to go into. Turn it round so you can use the end with a shovel on. Stop! shouted Dig. And Doug managed to stop the digger just in time. Poor oh, old Dig. What with giant moles and tape measures, he wasn't having a very good day. I'm not having a very good day, Doug. But at least the mound of earth was in the hole. Doug, what's that? Another mound of earth. Now, where did that come from? It was a real puzzle. There's only one thing to do, said Doug. But before Dig could ask what it was... We'll have to dig another hole, he called. Right, said Dig. Right up, Doug. Forward a bit. That's it. Yeah, lovely. And before long, the hole was filled and the mound was gone. But however many holes they seemed to dig, they always ended up with another mound of earth. Hello, Uncle Doug. Have you nearly finished? One more mound of earth and then we're done, Daisy. Well, why don't you push it under the caravan, she said. No one will notice. Right, said Dig. Good idea. We should have thought of that before, said Doug. And very soon, the job was done. And Dig and Doug and Daisy stood back to see how it looked. Perfect, said Dig. Perfect, said Doug. No one would ever know it was there, said Daisy. And she went off home. The sun's gone in, said Dig. It has, said Doug. Feels like snow. It does, said Doug. And sure enough, by the next morning... Uncle Doug! Uncle Doug! said an excited voice. It was Daisy with her toboggan. Dig and Doug took one look and couldn't wait to get outside. We've got a couple of tin trays, Daisy. Stand by, shouted Dig. Well, come on then, Daisy shouted back. And the next thing they knew, Mr. McAdam was joining in. Oh, ho, ho, ho. this is fun, he said. But where did this mountain come from? Daisy was out with the mayoress in the official car. Hello, Daisy! Morning, mayoress! called Dig and Duck, and they went on their way. When Dig and Doug arrived at the site, there was no one around, and everywhere seemed terribly quiet. Hi! Where is everyone? said Dig. It's terribly quiet, said Doug. Let's try the tunnel. 
Once inside, they looked and listened. Hello? Is anyone here? No answer. So, they went a little further. And then, suddenly, they saw the others. Morning! They all said cheerfully. Ah, dig, dug, said Mr. McAdam. You're just in time to hear some very important news. Dig and Doug were so pleased to see the others that they quickly settled down to listen. Mr. McAdam explained that the tunnel was nearly through and that the mayoress was coming at 12 o'clock to see it finished. Which means, he said, that while we all wait on the other side of this wall, two of you will have to dig from here and burst through. It was all very exciting. Everyone wanted to be chosen. But who would it be? In my hat are some bits of paper, he said. You each take one, and if yours has a cross on it, that means you're the winner. Ready? Go. Dig and Doug could hardly believe their luck. I can hardly believe my luck, said Dig. We've both won, said Doug. So, Dig went to get the digger, while Mr. McAdam gave Doug his instructions. Now, we'll all be waiting with the mayoress, so you mustn't be late. Have you got that? Doug said he had. And as they made sure that their watches said exactly the same time, Dig arrived back with the digger. Good luck, you two, they all said. See you at 12 o'clock. Right, said Doug. Let's get started. Right, said Dig. said Doug, feeling very important. Let's get the digger polished. Right, said Dig, feeling very important himself. And they began to polish. Coming along famously, said Dig. Oh, it's coming along famously, all right. So smart, Doug. It does, Dig. It does. Ever so smart. Come on. The mayoress will be round the other side soon. You'd better start her up. Here we go, then. But it was no good. It simply wouldn't start. Look underneath, said Doug, trying not to panic. Right, said Dig. What is it? Something's not right under here. What isn't right under there? This isn't. And it's broken. Don't worry. I think there's another one in the truck. So he hurried off while Doug tried to stop himself worrying. On the other side of the tunnel, Daisy and the mayoress had arrived. Hello, everybody, said Daisy. We're here, said the mayoress. Dig, meanwhile, began searching for the new part. 
a thing of me bob now. A couple of watses. Oh dear, oh dear, where can it be? But the more the minutes ticked by, the more worried Doug became. And the more worried Doug became, the louder his singing seemed to get. And the louder Doug's singing seemed to get, the more the mayoress was sure she could hear it. I say, Mr. McWatson, am I hearing things? Or is your man in there singing? As Dig carried on searching in the back of the truck, three more thingy bob now. Four more what's it? Oh dear, oh dear, still no sign of it. Doug was getting into a terrible state and his singing was louder than ever. The mayoress and everyone waiting on the other side listened carefully. But Doug was now so worried and his singing was so loud that as everyone leaned against the tunnel wall, it collapsed. I've got it! Greetings, Your Highness, said Doug. Congratulations, young man. I declare your tunnel open. Doug! shouted Dig as he ran back to the tunnel. Doug! I've got it! I've found it! But when he arrived, he could hardly believe his eyes. I've got it, Doug. So have I, Dig. What do you reckon? And when Daisy asked Dig to dance with her, Dig agreed. <laughs>